In this video, we're going to take a look at exposing parameters and publishing our substance. So we completed our material in the second video. And so now that we have our full material, what I would like to do is finish setting this substance up for publishing. First, let's expose a parameter that allows us to control the rust amount. So as you recall from the second video, we were using this histogram scan node and this position slider to be able to basically kind of dial in a roughness amount. And so we can expose this as a parameter so that we can make this adjustment in a host application. To expose the parameter, we're going to come over here to our function button and we're going to click to expose the drop down option and then we're going to choose expose. Now we need to set an input name. So we can use the default name it gives us or we can create a new. I'm going to use a new name and I'm going to call this rust underscore amount. Now that I have this input name, I'll click OK, and here we'll click OK to expose the parameter. Now, notice that we can no longer edit the slider. What this means is this slider has been promoted to the root level of the graph. So to get to the root level, I'm just going to double click here in an empty spot on my graph. Now, notice here that we're at the metal graph. So if I look over here, here is our metal graph. We're at that root level, and we now have this input parameters. Let's click this drop down here and you'll notice that, well, here's our rust amount. Let's click this arrow button here to expose all of the parameters. Now notice here that we have this identifier named rust underscore amount. Let's give this a more friendly label name. So here I'm just going to call this rust amount. And you can see that we have this default setting of 0.33. Now this is the setting that I had when I exposed the parameter and this is what I want to use for the default. Now I can actually set a min and max clamping range. So I'm going to keep this at 0 and 1. And so now I have this parameter exposed and ready to be used. So while we're here at the top root level of the graph, let's go back up to our base parameters. And as you recall, at the end of designing our substance, the very last thing we want to do is set our output size from absolute to relative to parent. So here that's going to put everything at that default 256 by 256 resolution. And so now we have this substance ready to go. Let's make sure that we save our package. So now what I want to demonstrate is the process of instancing here in Substance Designer. So here in our package we do have this metal graph and this is our full base material that we've created. Let's create another graph. So with our package selected I can just right click here and I can choose New Graph. And so here, this is a graph name. I'm just going to call this demo. And I'm going to leave everything at its default. Again, notice that we're using the metallic roughness template so that we have the base color, normal, rough, and metallic outputs. So here, I'll click OK. So now we have our blank graph. And the idea here is that we have this metal, and this is a base material. It's something that we want to be able to reuse. I can do that now in this new demo graph. So say this demo graph, I'm going to actually start to blend multiple materials like this together. So here, if I just left click and drag and drop this graph here into the demo graph, I create what is referred to as an instance. So here we'll zoom in and we can see that we have our graph. Also notice here that we have our rust amount as part of our instance parameters. Now throughout this series I was talking about creating custom nodes and how that we would have these instance parameters. Well we've basically just created our own custom node in terms of creating a base material which is our metal and this metal allows us to have a rust amount controller. Now notice we haven't actually hooked this material up to any of our outputs. So there's a couple ways that we can work with that. One of the things to think about here inside a designer is what mode the graph is set in. So we call this the creation mode. So notice that we have standard, material, and compact material. Now under the standard mode, you'll notice that, well, we have all these outputs. And these are all the outputs that we created in our metal graph. And if I want to make a connection to these, I could just manually just drag out a connection line and connect it to base color and do the same thing with my normal and so on and I could go through the process of manually connecting all of these nodes together just as we've been doing throughout this series. Let's just delete these connection lines for now. So another way that I could do this would be to set this here into material mode. So let's hit material mode or it's a 2 on the keyboard. So under material mode notice that we still see all of our channels exposed 
But now, when I go to drag the material, notice that all of the material lines are coming along for the ride. And when I make this connection, here, let's zoom out so we can see this work here. And when I make this connection, Designer is automatically hooking up the appropriate channels to the outputs. So now when we do this, we see we have our full material. Okay, so there's one thing I want to bring your attention to. Let's zoom in and take a look. Well, if we look at this, our base color, normal, rough, and metallic all came along for the ride. However, the custom outputs we created, ambient occlusion and height, they did not. They did not automatically connect. And you may think, well, that's because we don't actually have these outputs. So let's make some new outputs here. Just to save some time, I'm just going to select these two output nodes and just do a control C and a control V to copy and paste them. So let's just delete their connections and let's come into the roughness or the copy of our roughness and let's just change this here to ambient occlusion. And here, just as I did in the second video, we'll just copy that identifier for the label. I'm just gonna, this label could be anything I want. In this case, I'm just gonna call it AO. Now let's come over here to our metallic and this here was gonna be our height. And here for our identifier, we're just gonna set this to height. And then finally, remember, we need to set our usage. So we click the drop down, and we come over here to where we have our height. Uh, here it is. And there we go. So now we have these additional outputs. OK, so let's just delete all of our connection lines again. And let's just see if here in material mode, I can make that connection. Well, we have the outputs, but the connection still isn't working. OK, so the reason that is, and if we zoom in really, really close, you can see here that, well, our base, normal, rough, and metallic, they have this oval kind of dark shading around them, almost like they're linked or grouped. And that is precisely the case. These are actually grouped. And our ambient occlusion and height, the two outputs that we created, well, we didn't add those to the group. So let's go back into our material and do that now. So I'll double click the metal to go back into that. And let's see how we can group our outputs together. So let's just select one of the outputs that we know is already working. So roughness, for example. So we select roughness. Now notice that we have this field here called group. And it has some text in there. And it just happens to have the name material. Well, I'm just going to copy this name. And I'm just going to move down to where I have my ambient occlusion. And I'm going to paste material into group and do the same thing here for my height. Now, the name that I type in here doesn't matter. It could be anything. We could type Donald Duck for all we care into this group name. It doesn't matter. The only thing that matters is that all of the nodes or outputs that you want to group have the same name in this group parameter. And so just using this default material, we've accomplished that. OK, so let's save and jump back over to our demo. Now, when we zoom in, check it out. Our ambient occlusion height are now included within this group. Now, before we actually make our connection to our output, I want to show you one other kind of mode that we can work with. So right now, we've got this node, and it's showing all these outputs. But since we're thinking of this node as a full material, we really don't need to worry so much about seeing and connecting all these outputs. We can just let Designer do that. And since we've grouped our outputs, Designer knows how to do that. So here, we're going to choose the third option, which is compact material. And when we do that, you can see that we get just this single output. Now, notice the name says material. That's the name that we gave the group. It's a good thing we didn't choose Donald Duck. All right, so let's zoom out here. And now when we make our connection, so we'll just take this output and just drag it. You can see that Designer automatically hooks up all the outputs. And now we have our material viewing here in our 3D view. Now, here's one thing you'll notice. Remember when I set that height? So here we have our height map. Let's zoom in here and look at our height map. We have a height map here. Now, if you look, well, this height scale is pretty intense. So let's go to our materials and let's edit the material. And oh, look here, our height information is up pretty high. So let's just pull this value down just a little bit. So now, again, like I said, we're using this materials default and definitions. We'll come over to the metal rough shader and we have this parallax occlusion. So that's what we're actually working with here with that height information. Just gives a little bit of extra kind of depth there to the normal map. All right, so like we said here, we're also working here in 256. So let's double click to go to the root of this new demo graph. 
and let's change its resolution or output size here to absolute and we're going to set this to that 1024 we've been working with actually this time let's take it even higher let's go to 2048 since we've built this all procedurally it doesn't matter substance designer is working resolution independent here so now you can see that well our texture looks really sharp and clean now again this really showcases that non-destructive nature of substance we also take a look here at our metal notice its resolution is changing here, let's demonstrate that again by going back to the root of our demo. So I just double clicked in an empty spot. And here, we'll change our resolution back down to 1024. The node changes automatically. And again, this happens because of what I explained in the first video about resolution. Here, if we go back to our metal, just to reiterate the fact, we're going to double click an empty spot, takes us to our output size, we're set to relative to parent. So at this stage here, when we look at the demo graph, this node, our metal, has been instanced into the demo graph, so its resolution is now going to be relative to its parent, which is the demo graph, and if we double click to get to the root of the demo graph, that resolution is 1024. And that is why our metal instance node here inherits that resolution. Okay, so let's select our node again, and let's also take a look at the fact that we have this parameter exposed. So like I said here with this rust, we could just drag this parameter up, and now we get more rust on our material. And we'll just drag it down to reduce it again. So this again shows that power of substance and this non-destructive nature that you can build up these parameters to adjust these types of effects. And what's really awesome about this is here I change this rust amount, we get the rust amount, but that effect is being propagated across all my channels. So here is that rust affecting my normal, my metallic, my AO. Well, in this case, we don't have it in the AO, and we don't have that rust here in our height. But any of the channels that I set that effect to propagate to will do so automatically with just the tweak of a simple parameter. And so what I'm showcasing here is the foundation to how Substance Designer is used. We use it to create these modular base materials that are resolution independent, that give us parameters that we can change, and then we instance and use these materials over and over again in many different ways. We may use them to composite more complex materials, or we may use them directly inside of, let's say, Substance Painter or Unity or Unreal Engine. Also, we have this base material, and on this specific node, we could adjust a random seed. So here, if I just change the random seed, you can see that that procedural noise that we're using to generate our rust is just changing based on this seed. So every node has its own random seed, or it can inherit from its parent. Again, the root of our demo also has a random seed. So if I change that, we also randomize that rust parameter. Okay, so now that we've covered how instancing works here within Substance Designer, let's take a look at finally publishing here our substance. So what I want to do is I'm not actually using this demo anymore, so let's right click and let's just remove this from my substance package. All I really care about here is this metal. Now this is actually metal, so let's just right click and let's just give this a little bit more of a descriptive name. So let's call this uh, rusty underscore metal. So it just gives us an idea of that, well, we have a rust parameter. And so now that I have this, I'm going to just click this Publish button here. So we're going to click the Publish button. It's going to ask me where I want to save this. Again, for the SBSAR, which is the Substance Archive file, that's the file that you're going to be able to import into a host application that supports the Substance plugin. Let's add the same kind of rusty underscore metal name to that. So here on the desktop, we'll just save that for now. Now, in the Archive Publish options, I have uh, some parameter exposure. So I do want to work with my random seed. So you're going to leave that on by default. And then also my output size. Now, since we use that relative to parent, that means that I'm going to expose that output size, which then allows me to change the resolution in the host application. So these are the two options that you're going to want to have enabled. And we'll click OK. Now, Designer has now published that substance. So here is an example of our published substance working in UE4. So you'll notice that I've imported the SBSAR file. Here is that rusty metal substance. This is our metal material graph that we created. And then here you can see our substance textures. These are the outputs, and here they are generated as textures in UE4. Now here you'll also notice that I can take a look at the substance parameters 
And you'll notice here that we have our output size, so we can change our resolution. And we also have our rust amount slider, so we have full control of that here inside of UE4. Now, let's say that you don't want to utilize a substance material. Maybe you're working with a program that doesn't support the substance plugin. You can export textures from Designer as well. So what we would do here in our rusty metal graph is just set the output size to the desired resolution we want. So in this case, let's just set this up to 2K resolution. So we've generated our textures. And then we're going to come over to the top of the bar here and click this gear icon. And we're just going to choose this export outputs. And so here we can set a destination. We can set the image format that we want. And then here we can check the outputs that we want to make sure that we're going to save as images. So notice we have all the outputs enabled. Now, another thing that you can do is you can choose this automatic export when outputs change. And so once you've set up your destination and you saved, then with this option enabled, if you start to make changes here in the graph, Substance Designer will automatically export those textures in the background. So if your application supports like a hot reload of textures, you could just make changes in the graph, Designer's exporting those in the background, and then you could just switch to the application and have your application just auto reload those textures. In this quick start series, we walk through the Substance Designer workflow by creating a simple rusty metal base material. The core function of Designer is to create modular and reusable base materials that you can use in other applications such as Unreal Engine 4 or Substance Painter.